I remember the very moment when the war that would claim tens of thousands of lives started between two countries that I had both lived in and loved. Мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. From the second that I got the news, I started to doom scroll through social media and news outlets, hopelessly watching places that I had once visited go up in flames. I've always tried to be an action taker and to not just watch as things happen. So instead of continuing to dwell and sulk behind a phone screen, my friend Katya and I saved up money and went to Poland to help with our own two hands. Good morning from Zomki, Poland. So. We're gonna go to Warsaw right now, go get some groceries and all that, kind of, not really groceries, but we're gonna go get some stuff that we need, and then we're gonna go to the Ukrainian... Uh, embassy. Embassy, I'm uh, We're gonna go to the Ukrainian embassy, and we're gonna start our volunteering journey. So, join us. Поехали. We got to Poland, our mission was off to a really rough start. First day we went out, we walked around the city, went to a Ukrainian embassy to see what we could do to help there, see if they could suggest anything to us. Alright, so we're gonna go into the embassy to consult with the people to see what we can do to help here in Poland. This one guy, he just pointed us to go down the street, talk to some guy from the consultation office, just giving out information and resources to Ukrainians. And pretty much the only thing that he told us is to go online and to do applications there. And that really frustrated me and Katya because we had already been doing that for months since the start of the war. But that was until Katya's friend Natalia had come in from the Czech Republic, which is where she fled to at the start of the war, to visit us. The next day, Katya, Natalia, and I went into the city to continue our futile search of volunteer work, and at the end of the day, we still came up with nothing. So since we are not really able to do anything here in Warszawa, we're just gonna go to Lviv. We're gonna go into Ukraine, and we're gonna see what we can do there. So, our plan from there was to go into Ukraine itself, see what we could do to help there. But then that plan changed when Natalia told us about this town that she had passed through when she was fleeing Ukraine called Pshemish. And I do say that wrong throughout the entire video, so forgive me for that. So at the end of our first week in Poland, we split ways with Natalia, she went back to the Czech Republic, and to Pshemish we went. Yesterday we went to this one place and they pretty much told us they have enough people and pretty much just told us to go fuck ourselves. Um, so we are going to the city of Przemysl, um near the border of Ukraine. Um, because people are going in and out between the border and hopefully we can find uh, something to do there, people to help. All that good stuff, so. Until then. Alrighty, so we made it to Przemysl. Uh, and basically what our plan is going to be, so right now we're going to go out, um, we're going to go look for some water, um, but our main goal for right now is we're going to go find a place to volunteer, 
Um, just on our way here from the bus station, actually, there were volunteers everywhere because we kind of had to like pass through a bus station and like there were just people everywhere and people with like bright yellow little shirts that say volunteers. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go talk to some of those people, see if we can work with them. Um, and then we're pretty much just gonna go from there. So let's get it. So we went back to that train station and like I said, the bus station and the train station are right next to each other, connected through an underground pass. So we went back, we talked to this British gal. She got us signed up through their organization. We got signed up, we got our volunteer vests, and it really did not take a long time for the reality of the situation to set in. What we did as volunteers was actually quite simple. The train station wasn't really made to handle so many people going in and out every day, and a lot of these people were packing their entire lives with them. Just huge, heavy bags getting off these trains. So a lot of what we did was just help them carry those bags up and down stairs, and then we would give them directions on where they should go next, depending on if they're going farther into Poland or into some other country. And if they had a trainer bus that was leaving, either a day or several days later, we would help them get a place to stay until their trainer bus would leave whenever it leaves. So there were two shelters, there was Tesco, and then there was the Ukrainian embassy. Tesco was basically just a grocery store that was cleared out and they put a bunch of cots in. Same thing with the Ukrainian embassy. I never visited Tesco, I did visit the Ukrainian embassy shelter. And near the end of the week and a half that I was at Pshemish, Tesco actually shut down and people ended up sleeping inside of the train station on the floors and on the benches. Even with Tesco and the Ukrainian embassy shelter up and running, it was overall just really rough and chaotic and very emotionally and physically taxing. I don't want to complain too much though, because obviously being a refugee is far worse than just being amongst the chaos. One thing that we did at Pshemish that I will never forget were these trains called the Hanover trains. Basically this German train company was doing the train station a favor basically because all the funds had run out in the town and they weren't really able to give the the refugees a lot of, you know, any real free stuff anymore. So every other day this train would show up. There was no signing up for it. Basically the refugees just had to show up and hope they got on. The refugees who went onto that train, the ones who tried to get onto it were usually the ones who really did not have very much. And I will never forget those trains because before the trains, you know, everyone's gathering up. You can tell that not everybody's gonna get on and you're talking to them. They're trying to convince you saying like, we'll pay you to let us get on. I'll pray for you, you know, just saying, hey, I have kids. Like, can you guarantee I'm gonna get on? And you just had to tell them and it was terrible to just have to tell people like, no, I can't guarantee it. You might have to wait another two days to leave this stupid town. So it was really rough. Um, and then when the train showed up, people started to panic, started to crowd, you know, the police and military were there telling people to back up, 
you know, I was a translator a couple times because a lot of the Polish people didn't speak Russian or Ukrainian. People would crowd so much. There was a gal who passed out, ambulance showed up. And then I remember I got on to the train and the police and the military would basically just pull out the women and children out of the crowd. And I'd have to like pull them up onto the train and you're, and I'm just looking down at everybody's faces and like, you can just really see like the look of like true fear and just distress on their faces. And the reality really, really hit me at those times. One of the most important things that I learned for myself during this experience is that among chaos, pain, grief, suffering, people will always find and express joy, gratitude, care, and see the good in things. And though there is no good in war, I learned that though some may manifest their hate and frustration onto others, resilience and spirit is a innately human thing. Thank you.